share Christ with people. If you come to church and you enjoy church that day, tell somebody about it. If you had an awesome day and Lord did a mighty work in your life, tell somebody about it. We use it for everything else. We use it to tell everybody what we don't like about that day. We use it to brag about the, the, the other great things that we ha have in our lives, but there's nothing greater. We all said that at Christmas last week, nothing greater than the gift of Jesus. So use it to encourage others. Use it to invite people to church. Uh, I put a post up this morning, uh, invited people to, to attend church somewhere. I was uh, a little late, apparently... Uh, Enough people didn't get to see it and have time to get here. Uh, but I've got some ideas about something else. But again, just uh, be thinking of ways and, and praying how God can use you to further his kingdom. And, and we need to look and make sure that we're using all the things that he's gifted us with. Again, as we look back over the, the last year, lots of things taking place in our individual lives, lots of things taking place in our nation, lots of things taking place in our church. What about going forward? Today is a, a day that I want to challenge you before you leave here today to begin to develop your vision for 2020. How awesome if you, if you put it in place before then, how awesome if we fill this place up the first Sunday of a new year the first Sunday of a new decade. How often if we make a commitment, a new commitment to Christ today to, like Dwayne said a while ago, y'all gonna find out the things he said a while ago. You know, I always say he doesn't uh, know what I'm preaching most of the time, and but I'm pretty sure that he walked in there this morning and got my Bible and started reading through my sermon because he just got up and shared a good bit of it. But. I want to remind you that if you'll commit to God, he'll, he'll equip you. He'll give you what you need to, to serve. And, you know, I think one of the things that we don't do often enough, y'all understand that we're not just supposed to be raising up people to come to church in here, right? We're supposed to be raising up other folks to become ministers, worship leaders. More people to work in the AV in the audio visual, in the sound booth. More people to work with the children in the back. Maybe you're like Dwayne and you're that person that's been running. I ran for seven years thinking that I had, I, I gave up on thinking that I knew God didn't lose his mind. I started thinking that I had lost mine, thinking that God wanted me to preach. But maybe your vision is to respond and accept what God has laid out in front of you, whatever it is. Remember that we're all parts of the body of Christ. And whatever it is that God's calling you to do is just as important all the way up to the pastor. It's all important. It's important for you to be present and for you to serve and to do the things that God has, has called you to do. Again, if he's called you, he equips you. So again, this morning... A challenge. Did you know that 2020 is a leap year? Some of us have been out of school so long, we, we know the term leap year, but we don't really even remember what that means. Well, I'm going to cut to the chase. We're going to use that term leap and say that I pray that 2020 is a year for growth for you spiritually, a year for our church to grow. And you know what? Since it's a leap year, I want to challenge you to make it a year where you grow you take a giant leap in your growth for Christ this year. Matter of fact, I want to go to the Lord in prayer right now and just ask that God would bless us with that. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come before you this morning as we prepare to, to get into your word. Father, I, I pray that, Lord, you would come to us now. Lord, you would forgive us of, of everywhere we failed, of everywhere through this past year that, God, we had opportunities to serve you and maybe we didn't. We had opportunities to live for you and maybe we didn't. We had opportunities to, to share your love and we didn't. And Father, this morning, I pray that, God, you remind all of us that when you call us, you equip us. Lord, I pray that, God, you put a new fire in our hearts. Lord, I pray that you remind us that you're a God of, of second chances, of third chances, of fourth chances. God, I pray this morning we all realize we've had enough chances. And Lord, now we want to commit to live for you, to live in your power and your strength. Father, we want to grow in you. We want to grow spiritually to be more Christ-like. 
We want to take a great leap in how much we reflect Jesus. Lord, I pray this church would grow. Lord, that every individual would grow in knowing you more. Every family would become uh, more of a family that attracts people to you. Lord, I pray that we even that we would grow in numbers, that we would fill this place so that more might come to know you and that your kingdom would be extended. Father, I pray that this church would glorify you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're all called to grow. That growth, spiritual growth, includes becoming more Christ-like, looking a little bit more like Jesus daily. If you're here today and maybe you realize you've, you've squandered a, a lot of time, a lot of life, that's okay. I do that sometimes and think, why did I wait till I was 25 years old to start a relationship with Jesus? Why did I wait till I was 32 years old to surrender to his calling? But I have to put all that behind. You have to put all the, the stuff behind this past year, maybe times that you know that you failed. Ask God to forgive you. His word says that he will forgive you when we confess our sins to him. Repent, turn from that sin and move forward. Today, I, I believe we're going to see that all of us are called to grow and be more like Jesus. We're going to be looking at 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 11. As we read this, I, I pray that you understand that a, a new year can mean a new you. Why are you turning there? I'm, I'm not just talking about the, the gym and the diets. They'll all start back next week. They'll be full up. Those are great. We should be healthy. We should eat right and take care of our bodies. But even more important than that is a new spiritual you. Second Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 2, it says, May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire for this very reason, make very effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a purpose as Christians, part of that purpose is to grow to be more like Christ. This morning, the first thing I want you to know that when I challenge you to, to grow, to leap forward in your spirituality, to leap forward in, in knowing about Jesus, to, to leap forward in being like Christ, I want you to understand this morning that God has provided all that you need to grow spiritually. God has provided all that you need to grow spiritually. It'd be a good place for an amen. Then we sit around and we look, we, we, we blame things. We blame other reasons why we don't grow, why we haven't grown, why there hasn't been a, a lot of growth. For some of us, the greatest day in our our walk with the Lord was the day of salvation. I promise you, that's a great day. That's an awesome day, a day to be remembered. Mine was October 11th, 1996. If you want to go to the Liberty Bowl with me and we can get in there, I can show you where I was sitting in the stairs I walked down when I made Jesus Lord of my life. 
But I can tell you that it's been even better since then. And I can tell you that we're called to grow. That every day God starts something on the, the, the day of salvation in your life. You become a new creation, but just like a, a new baby, a baby grows. You're called to grow. If there hasn't been any change in your life in 2019, today's the day to commit to make 2020 differently. Understand that God provides everything you need. Just as if we plant a crop, if we plant some, some corn, well, it needs soil to grow in. It needs sunlight. It needs some fertilizer. It needs some rain. All that's there and necessary for growth. And there are some things that are necessary for us to grow as Christians. God provides everything that we need. There in verses 3 and 4, it says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. What did he provide? All things. Through the knowledge of him who called us of his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. You have everything you need to grow spiritually. Let's say that loud. Everybody with me. I have everything I need to grow spiritually. It'd be a great time for me to say, what's stopping me? What's stopping me? Folks, we've got to make it a priority. You can let all the, you know, I, I wondered sometimes, why is it so common that we're so busy? And Tiny and I have conversations and say, well, w were our parents this busy? I don't know whether they were this busy or not. I was a kid. I wasn't paying attention. But I believe that all that busy, some of that's created by Satan. Some of that's distractions. Folks, we need to focus and make our growth a priority. The Bible says that we can have peace through our relationship with Christ. I believe all of us want peace this year. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. That's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. We also have uh, power in our relationship. If we're going to grow, we need power, his divine power. This is verse 3 there, has granted to us all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. You need God's grace. You need God's power as your foundation if you're going to grow. You can't really get anywhere without those. you got to have a foundation. And those things, that foundation starts with Jesus. Saying yes to, to Jesus. It's through your relationship with Jesus that you can even begin to grow. And again, I say this week after week, yet I encounter people who say, I don't want to come to church right now, or I don't want to get a relationship with, with Jesus right now. I don't want to be at one of them Jesus streets right now because there's some, you don't understand, there's some things in my life that I need to get taken care of. Well, understand that you're not going to get those taken care of on your own, Christian or non-Christian. You can't grow on your own. The things you need to grow come from God. They come through a relationship with Jesus. This morning, I pray that you understand that the greatest vision that you can have for next year would be, first of all, to start with a relationship with Christ. If you've never said yes to Jesus, I don't care if you're 70 years old or you're 10 years old. If you've never said yes to Jesus, that's where it really starts. You want to grow, you want to grow spiritually, you can't get to a certain point on your own. If it was, if that was possible, we wouldn't even need Jesus, amen? We saw the Old Testament proves how we do without him. We needed a Savior, and God answered that. That's why we just celebrated Christmas, the birth of that baby. God makes promises. In verse 4, he said, By which he has granted to us his precious and very great promise, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. 
God's made a, a, a lot of a lot of promises. One of the promises I want you to think about this morning is, and maybe even what Peter may have even been, been pointing to there, is that you know that Jesus is coming back one day. Jesus is coming back for his bride, the church. That means you and I, if we've given our, our life to Christ. Now, I, I don't know when that's going to be. I don't know if that's going to be tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to be within the, the next hour or if it's going to be a thousand years from now. Matter of fact, my Bible says that I won't know and you won't know. And those people out there that say send them $100 and they'll tell you when it will be. That's in God's timing. But I want to be a partaker in that, whether God calls me home before then or whether I'm here when, when Christ returns. The glory of that day. We're called to be a part of God's glory. And again there in, in verse 3, uh, we're called us to his own glory and excellence. When we become a, a Christian, there's a, a change. There's a, a new start. And Mr. Hugh became a, a Christian many years ago, but he's becoming new this year. New ears, new eyes, new knees. I forgot he can hear me now, right? Yeah. God does something way greater in that when we make Jesus Lord of our life. That's how we're allowed to grow. He starts a, a moral growth, a spiritual growth in us. It's, it's something that just happens through his power, through his strength, through his peace when we engage into a relationship with Christ. Now we all know that our relationship with, with Christ is exemplified as the relationship between the, the church and Jesus as in the marriage between a man and a woman. So let's look at an example of a, a, a man and a woman. You take a, a guy who has a, a bachelor pad you all know how those are, are decorated. Most of them are not really, well, you can go in and kind of tell that a lady doesn't live there. Stuff's not really where it's supposed to be. They're not necessarily decorated as nice as they could be, but you let that bachelor meet his bride. And a lot of times when he is committed to his side of the relationship, He'll begin to, to make changes. He might even begin to, to make changes if they're going to live in that same house when they become married. He might even begin to make changes before you know it. You know there's no longer a, a drill and hunting stuff laying on the kitchen table. Tanya, please don't comment right now. <laughs> but there begins to be changes and he begins to, to look more like a married person. Because he loves his bride and he wants to please her. It's something that just happens. I want you to know today that if you know Jesus Christ as, as Lord of your life, not if you just know who Jesus is, but if Jesus is Lord of your life and you've entered into that relationship, there should be change through God's power and through God's strength. And if there hasn't been, but you're truly saved, then you know what? You need to let go and let God. Let him be in control of your life. Again, in verse 4, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. God makes changes in his children. Even when we, even when we fall back, even when we backslide, God's still there. You know, my, my daughter, Kaylee, is my child. You wonder why she sits in the back. She hopes I can't find her. Even if she leaves today and drives home and says, you know what, Dad? 
I don't want to talk to you for a while. I'm not going to come around you. I'm not going to call you. Don't text me. Matter of fact, I'm blocking you on social media. I'm still going to love her. And the day that she is ready to come home, I'm not going to wait long. I'm going to go after her. But the day she's ready to, to come home and re-enter into that relationship, I'm going to be standing there with arms wide open. That's how God loves us. Matter of fact, way greater. You know, sometimes I wonder how another person could love their children more than I love my daughter. I even wonder how people that have two kids, how do you do that? I can't imagine if, if she had a, a sibling, but imagine that God's love is so much greater than that. Today, understand that, that God desires that closeness that you once had with him. If you've drifted away and maybe you haven't engaged in that relationship like you used to, God desires to be close again. He's provided everything you need. I want you to understand today that, that God promises us a life. And that life that, that God has set before you, living out him, is right there. Go for it. That's what we say about everything else in life. Go for it. Well, there's not many other things that you can go for that are going to bring the peace and the promises and the love that comes for living out the life that God has set before you. Again, Dwayne talked about saying yes to God in his life. Yes to a life of service. Well, can you imagine doing life since then if you had not committed to that? I can tell you that in, in my household, that until I said yes to Jesus, and then I committed to answer his call, life wasn't necessarily filled with joy, peace, there wasn't a lot of growth. What is God calling you to today? What is God giving you to grow in this next year? I promise if you keep trying to do it on your own, you'll never get there. You know, as a, as a young kid, we used to measure Kaylee height on the doorpost, the door frame to her door bedroom. Every year we would mark it again to see how much she had grown. She always wanted to be a little taller than she was before. Matter of fact, we'll probably tear that off the wall when we sell that house and move one day. But it took her eating drinking, taking what we provided for and using it in order for her to grow. If there was a, a measuring stick of your growth in Christ today, where we measured you and we had measured you last year, the year before, maybe we go back to the year that you first came to know Christ. I know for me, the the year that I came to know Christ, I was so excited. I wanted to tell everybody that I spoke to. As a matter of fact, I'm sure I became quite annoying to non-believers. I was so excited about my relationship with Jesus. So that's a good thing. If you're going to get called something, not much better than being called one of them Jesus freaks. Now we want to share Jesus in a loving way. But I wonder today if we were to take the last few years worth of measurements on your spirituality, on your interest in God, on your time spent with him, your desire to serve him, your desire to reflect him in your life, would those marks be getting higher? Or would they maybe even be dropping off? Again, it's not through you. We said Kaylee grew through all the stuff that we provided her. There's a lot of chicken nuggets raising that thing up. God's provided everything you need. We all said it. We said it out loud together. 
go for it this year. Be willing to, to reach out. Make every effort. God gives us different kind of disciplines, different ways, different things that we would use to grow. I wonder today if you're using those resources. I wonder today if you are maybe not growing or haven't grown because you haven't taken advantage of the resources that, that God puts out there. The couple of things that that I want to talk about. You know, one of those is reading your Bible. You know, we sang a while ago, Word of God Speak. It's hard for God's Word to speak with the volume turned down. You turn the volume down by leaving your Bible in the car, leaving it under the bed, leaving it on the counter, not knocking the dust off and opening the pages. Oh, but Chris, I've got that Bible reading app on my phone, and yeah, when it pops up and you're on social media, you just slide it to the side. When it says it's, if you got Bible Gateway, it says it's time for your Bible study this morning. How many times you push that out of the way and you keep on of the things of the world? You say, well, I want to read my Bible, but I'm really busy. Where's your priorities? We have to be in tune. Matter of fact, I believe that maybe... Maybe you need to start with a new year with a, a reading plan. There are all different types of reading plans out there. If there are plans that will take you through one chapter or one book over and over and over and over. There are reading plans out there that will take you through the whole Bible in a year. Pray about it. This is one time I'm going to tell you to Google it. Google Bible reading plans. There's some good ones out there. But you got to apply it. you got to use it. You can't grow if you're not using the things that, that God has given you. What about church attendance? Church attendance. Man, that's one that... <laughs> That's one that's easy for us to put to the side. You know, used to, people were, were in church at least three Sundays out of the month, and we've become a society that, and y'all, there are numbers out there. I'm not going to bore you with all of those statistics, but just know the, the number of people who found church important 30 years ago and attended regularly because it was a priority in their life have dropped. I want you to know that the number of people who found church and regular attendance a priority in New Day Fellowship in the past two years, it's dropped. Now, I know you're busy. I know there are other things going on. And I'm going to tell you what, I appreciate y'all being here on a rainy Sunday morning. Some of you are in the middle of your holiday break from work and you need rest. But there's no greater rest than resting in the Lord. And y'all, I'm telling you that if you're trying to, to continue to go through life with just a little bit of Jesus here and there, <laughs> Your batteries are going to get drained. It's going to get harder and harder. If you want to grow this year, then you're going to have to commit to regular church attendance. Again, I'm not standing up here and, and, and being legalistic. I understand things happen, things come up, but you know a stubbed toe is not a good reason to miss church. I've seen people get up and get toted and placed in their wheelchair and rolled in a church house when others would stay home because they stubbed their toe getting out the door. God's provided everything that we need. And again, this, today I think the, the key that I want to maybe put out there for today, for your vision for 2020 would be about God's word. Again, it started with a relationship with Jesus and then get into his word his love letter for us. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I'm going to offer you that opportunity today. If you're still not convinced, I pray Lord gives you enough time 
and that you have that opportunity. But I even challenge you, get into God's Word and read it. Because I believe if you get into God's Word and you read it, that there's going to come a time where you're going to just want to say yes to Jesus. There is power in this Word. In order for God's... plan for God's vision for you for 2020 to be fulfilled for you to grow you're going to have to get into God's word and when you get into God's word one of the things that you need to do it needs to become a personal habit a personal habit don't raise your hand if you're a a smoker. I don't smoke. My dad smoked most of his life but I know people that smoke and dippers I won't won't even pick on y'all right now A lot of people for smoking becomes a habit. It doesn't matter what is is going on. You're going to get that cigarette in. It doesn't matter what is going on. You're going to get that that, that smoke. And matter of fact, the busier things get, the more you want it. Matter of fact, I, I worked with a guy many years ago that was a dispatcher, one of the better dispatchers I ever worked with. We were not allowed to to smoke inside the police building. But the minute a car would key up and say, we're northbound into Memphis, I have one refuse them, before he answered them, he was blowing that smoke out. And then he would key up and he would answer them. It was a habit, something he had to have. Y'all, if you're a smoker, if you want to do the research, it's to make you do what you just heard coming from back there. Make you cough. Made my dad very sick, very... Very ill. He smoked since he was eight years old. I'm not here to get on you about your, your smoking today. You know what it is. It's a, it's a habit. But I share a habit like that because I want to encourage you what a greater habit it would be if reading God's Word was that important to you. If you said, I'm going to make time. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to just do it once a day. Every other day, I'm going to do it as much as I possibly can. And when things get busy and I get stressed out, I'm getting in God's Word. When I get down, when I get depressed, when I feel beat up, when the world's on my shoulders, I'm going to read God's Word. When I get in that argument, when I get angry, I'm going to read God's Word. When I get up in the morning, I'm going to read God's Word. As a matter of fact, if you have that habit, Reading God's Word might be a way to put that away. My dad pretend quit a lot of times, but he quit for real one day, and he never smoked again. And if he was here, he would tell you that it was through God's strength, through God's grace. He prayed. He had tried it enough on his own and said, God, you're going to have to help me with this. And you know what? He quit. After about 60 years, he quit. One of the things that I noticed in my dad, quite often when I went down there, his Bible was always beside his chair. He would call me, he would ask questions. So he was actually reading it. He was asking good questions. As a matter of fact, I was thankful. Because, hey, my dad would always ask me questions that gave me a challenge. But he wasn't afraid to ask me the questions that most of us have, but we're afraid to ask. So maybe your new personal habit to begin to take care of that habit that might not be so healthy for your body could be replaced by reading God's Word. You have to do it often. Reading your Bible not only has to be a personal habit, you have to do it frequently. Once a week on Sunday morning before church, or that friend who posts that Bible verse, you know you can't claim your Bible reading when someone else posts a verse every day, right? You need more than that. It's okay to post scripture, amen. I have friends who post scripture and I appreciate it. And I stop and I read them. But you need to get alone with God and you need to do it often. 32% say they read it every day. 12% say they read it rarely or never. A fourth a church going people indicate they read a Bible a few times a week. Another 12% say once a week. Another 16% once a month. Some a few times a month. 
Now, I'm not going to ask you where you fall in there, and I'm not real sure those surveys are even right because I believe even in blind surveys where there's no way anybody to know, folks still want to mark and make it sound like they're reading it even more. Trust me, I, I got a busy life too. I understand. But you got to do it. If you want to grow, you got to take part of the things that God has given you. If you want your relationship with him to grow, get into God's word. Again, you need a reading plan. A couple different kinds, and these are not the kind I'm talking of. How many of you have that when I have a need reading plan? You ever use that one? I know you have. You don't know what I'm talking about right now, but I go to God's word when things are getting heavy and and bad. Those things I just recommended a while ago, and that's when you read your Bible. But when everything's good, I don't go. So I'm on the one I have a need plan. Pastor, I read my Bible. It's been a rough week. I've read it four times this week. And the week before that, I didn't read it all because everything was good. That's not the kind of reading plan that we're talking about. What about the flip open plan? Y'all, I'm going to be honest. There was a time, and I did that right after I first got saved. I thought that was how you read Man, I would, I would flip open, and I'd read them red letters, too. I was thankful that when I got saved, that when I went and told my mom, she run and got her Bible and gave to me. It had the words of, of Jesus in red. Sometimes I would flip, and if I didn't see any red letters in it, I would flip again until I found one. Y'all, you don't always know what you're reading what's going on there when you, you do that that way. I'm never going to knock that either one of these won't work because there is power in God's Word. Sometimes God may control where that Bible opens up. But I want you today to know you need a, a real organized, a plan that goes from I read rarely or almost never to I have a plan. I have a vision that in 2020, I'm going to study the Gospels. In 2020, I'm going to read the Bible from beginning to end. In 2020, I'm going to study Genesis. In 2020, I'm going to study Revelation. Whatever it is, pray about it. Put it in place. Make it as important, uh, more important than any other habit that you have. So today... There were lots of things that happened in 2019. You know what? There are 365 days of things going to happen in 2020. What is your vision for those days? Where will we measure you on the wall today versus next year? The amount that you grow is up to you. Not in your power or in your strength, but God doesn't force himself upon us. I challenge everyone here today during our, our time of invitation that you would take just a couple of minutes, evaluate where you've been this past year, evaluate where you want to go next year. And as I look around the room, there's not anybody in here I don't know a little bit about. And the little bit I know about every one of you says, you have great potential. And that potential comes through Jesus Christ. What will you allow God to do through you in this next year? And again, if you're here today and, and you don't know that you know that you know, if you don't have that, that base you don't have that relationship with Jesus. Hey, the only shame is getting up and walking out of here once again and not saying yes to him. Because one day is all that's going to matter is your relationship with him. Get things right with him today. Just stand.